Welcome, Fly Tribe, and welcome to the Painful Truth Podcast, where we will dive deep into uncomfortable topics that will help us grow as an aerial athlete. Are you ready? Let's go. All of a sudden, coronavirus creates a boom in the digital fitness world. Welcome guys, my name is Abby Moldenhauer. I'm a retired and former professional aerialist. Welcome to the Painful Truth Podcast, where we dive deep into uncomfortable topics and conversations that help us grow as a human and an aerial athlete. All of a sudden, coronavirus creates this boom within the digital fitness world. The sudden surge of online coaching available, when COVID caused people to stay at home, there was this surge online, the surge of online buying. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you're the first to know when I drop the newest episode. All right, let's dive deep. All of a sudden, coronavirus hit. And this coronavirus all of a sudden made all of these lockdowns happen. And all of a sudden, this boom in the digital fitness world happened. Fitness apps have seen a steep rise in users during the pandemic, not to mention online class structures. Some gyms across the United States and other countries haven't even opened since the first lockdown. Being from Texas, this is completely baffling to me. Even someone who owns a gym, I can't imagine or fathom not being able to open my gym and having to solely rely on restructuring my format and going online. It's literally, it could be destructive. But before the pandemic hit, many people were struggling to make time to get to the gym especially when having the factor to like work and commute and, you know, as a professional or even, you know, family structuring or even like social, social obligations. Like people were having a hard time with, with literally time. And that was always the biggest um, hurdle for most of my clients is finding the time. The cost of even the gym memberships and studio memberships has also been a common, 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 it's been a common barrier for people to to exercise and work out. But ever since the coronavirus, the COVID-19, the pandemic hit and at home workouts suddenly became like the norm. Many still wanted that group feeling, that group class experience, Um, which turned virtual um, or even in the form of streaming live and pre-recorded classes it just became like the norm for people and even people when some when gyms started to open some people still wanted to do both they wanted to do online and studio it really reminded me of literally going back to the 80s where I was obsessed with um, getting my favorite fitness trainer's newest VHS. And I would literally do it over and over in my living room. Uh, It was great. But while virtual workouts were an existence prior to the COVID, and they did exist prior to the COVID, um, the use was predictably increased. Mind body, their data showed a huge jump in consumers accessing virtual content. And um, this was since March of 2020. So literally the statistics for that guys is 73% consumers are using pre-recorded videos versus 17% in 2019. That is a massive difference. 85% are using live stream classes weekly versus 7% in 2019. The data also showed that since March 20 and 20, consumers are actually working out even more than before. 
And that's because of those barriers that I mentioned before, like um, just the time aspect, people not having to commute. You know, I'm from a small town, so the commute isn't, it's not a huge deal, but I know um, living in cities prior, it is difficult to get anywhere. 50 per, 56% of respondents exercising at least five times per week. So that is a massive increase in people just exercising and then exercising at least five times a week. That's awesome. That really is cool. And so I'll get into it a little bit later, but I used to boycott the whole aerial training deal online. But I really think that is awesome to see these statistics that more people are actually working out and more people are actually working out more often. People are able to just show up and have that experience in the comfort of their own home. And I even, I love that myself. It does take a lot of discipline though. Um, many are even saying that, you know, it doesn't, it's nice because it doesn't involve a commute. So that's a lot of the reason why people are just able to do it because they can wake up it doesn't matter what they look like, they can roll out of bed. They don't even have to, if they're like doing a Zoom um, class, they don't even have to turn the video on. They can just put a picture there or whatever the case is and you don't even have to be seen. It's really awesome. So they're finding that they're able to like squeeze in those workouts between even like, some people are still working at home, so between those little breaks, people are able to like squeeze in workouts during those breaks, it's pretty great. Um, so, but maybe when work ends, even when, um, people have like family responsibilities, um, they're able to kind of like squeeze in those workouts in between, which is pretty, pretty awesome to see in, um, uh, here. I know for me, when I first heard of the pandemic happening, it just raised alarms for me that I needed to get super healthy. So I know um, maybe that was for some people as well. Maybe that's why that rate that those statistics are higher and hopefully so, you know, hopefully people are um, getting it in their heads that we need to become a more healthy society and um, get back to living more basic, if you know what I mean. We've gotten so extreme in everything that we do and you're talking to someone who loves being extreme in every possible way. But I've learned that being extreme, uh, it has um, some sacrifices with it and some hardships. And I can attest to that to this day, you know, going too extreme and paying the price now. So, if, you know, it's all about that balance, how we, how we find that balance. But let's see, 46% of the survey participants stated that they intend to make virtual classes a regular part of their routine. Guys, that's 46% people. That That's crazy. Even after studios reopen, and that's, that's pretty nuts. Um, but you know, I love that. I love that people are working out at home. I used to do it, I still do it. Um, it's kinda how I was raised. It's just kinda like, it kinda kept me out of trouble when I was younger, because that's kinda all I did was just work out at home and it was great. I loved it. I loved getting the newest workout video. It was kind of a thing. And I'm kind of a collector in that way. So um, you get to where you kind of collect these, the artwork of the, of the fitness programs. But a third of the consumers also stated that they plan to visit more studios after trying new workouts virtually. And that 40% of the consumers are booking workouts with with the studios. They have already, um, they have never physically visited before. So this is allowing businesses to reach digital first clients per se. And that's pretty cool too because it's, it's not only helping the people, it's actually helping the businesses too. So I'm hoping, you know, that's the case. Um, as, a, as a gym owner myself, you know, it's hard for me to gauge because I do live here in Texas where we've been open and I've not had to solely rely on like online stuff, but um, let's hope that it is helping everybody. 
but how does this all fit into the aerial world? What COVID has done, I think, is that it's just accelerated a trend that was already in the making. And if you agree with this, guys, let me know in the comments below. I want to know if you agree with that or if you disagree. Let me know in the comments. Um, it really pushed the industry toward and forward and forced a lot of change, right? And I don't think any of us really had um, a chance to really even think about the change as it was happening because it was happening so rapidly that we all had to just adapt so that we didn't sink. If you agree with that, let me know in the comments. If that resonates with you, let me know. I'd like to know. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. Okay, guys, it really does help us to continue to bring out this free information for you guys. And um, that's all we ask for is just that like and a little comment. And that really does, weirdly and oddly enough, it helps us. But literally, like, I boycotted online training for so long. I, I used to boycott YouTube tutorials or even, like, coaching online through Zoom. Um, it's just because of safety. And safety was always and is always first for me, as it should be for you, too. Um, learning from videos makes it really easy to miss an important rap. And then you would be like literally on the ground, right? This actually happened when I was in circus school during an open gym. One of the girls in my class, she was learning from YouTube videos. And this was when YouTube was pretty new and like videos like this was just starting to surface. And uh, she, she fell on her head. She missed a rap or something and she fell on her head and not funny at all, but from then on the studio, um, they banned learning from videos like that. And I bet it's different now. I wonder what the rules are now. Now this is a very um, high professional training facility. So I don't, I don't know how they still feel about the online training because they don't, um, I think they offer online training, but not in like the tutorial fashion. But just like my thoughts have changed, um, um, it's exactly what prompted me to make my tutorials in the first place though, was because I figured I would teach from a safe perspective and give the industry some insight on like how important progressional training was and the practical methods that I teach. Um, some of the benefits of online training, which I know you guys already know firsthand because a lot of you guys already train online. The added flexibility and the self-paced learning to it um, can be really nice. Not many people have the ability to take time off from like their jobs or their families or whatever. And so online learning kind of helps that. Um, it gives more flexibility for your time. Better time management kind of like juggling work and family and school and all these things, sometimes it just works out better for people. Um, it also helps learn self-motivation and I do think that this is partially what really helped me learn how to be self-motivated and self-disciplined is by doing this type of stuff at home. Um, it really makes you learn how to do it on your own, you know, without being like, pushed from from somebody uh, in person. You've only got a video or whatever it is and you have to you have to do it because I can tell you when I did some of my COVID during COVID when we were locked we did get locked down for two months and I did do live Zoom classes for my local students and whoever else wanted to do them, right? But um, later on, some of my students did tell me that they would just turn off the video and they would walk off and just do whatever else. So, um, you know, there is that self-responsibility that comes in play. And that's why I always, I always try and teach about self-responsibility because at some point, it's, it's you that has to do it. It's, it's not me as the teacher or the coach. I can give you all the information and usually all the programs, all the, the, the classes and things like that, they'll all produce results. It's just a matter of 
are you following the program? So it's usually in the hands of you. <laughs> Not usually, it is in the hands of you. Learning virtually, it, ta it saves you a lot of time, which is, you know, I love that aspect to it because I know right now in my specific life, I am super busy. I work anywhere from 12 to 16 hours, uh, five to six days a week. And so time saving is a massive yes for me. It has, it's like a massive must for me right now, as it probably is for a lot of people out there. So it just helps to save time. Um, just think about it, all the time spent traveling to and from somewhere to go in person and to take a, a class or a course. Um, like for me, like I said, I don't live very far from places. I only live about 20, 30 miles from places, but I've lived in places where it's taken me an hour or two just to get one place. And I know that's in a lot of people's cases. So I can see why, um, Learning virtually can save a lot of time for people and can be a really, really big plus. So some online learning, you can literally start whenever you want. That's kind of one of the perks of when you purchase a program or, um, you know, uh, pur purchase, yeah, like an online video or program, you can uh, watch it later and that's kind of nice. and. And also usually you get full access for like a lifetime and so you can return back to that information and that's really nice versus like if you went to a class in person you don't get that class for a for an eternity um, you don't you know you didn't video it or anything so online learning can be nice in that aspect because you have full access usually to that video or, or that program for a lifetime usually of that program. So just longer access to the knowledge. And I really love being able to replay the video. Uh, I tend to do that a lot because I like to, uh, I just like to go back and re-listen or redo something. And that's always a really nice do um, when you're learning online is being able to just rewind. And having anywhere access is really pretty awesome. Nowadays, it's not even, it's even better than before. You know, before we just had like our living room and like our VHS or whatever. But nowadays, you know, you can, you can have access on your phone. Um, you can have access on your different computer devices, your tablets. It's pretty awesome. Um, so I really love that. Uh, anytime access, anywhere access, it's more flexible. It's usually more cost effective if you put the pencil to the paper. Usually online courses, online programs are cheaper than like an in-person program or um, something like that. Some of the downfalls of e-learning or like online learning, I would say probably the biggest thing for me is I personally love being in a class. I love that energy. It's like that synergy, right? that the vibe that um, all that energy creates. I really love that. So I would just say kind of like the social interaction could be a downfall for online learning. For some people, it's a plus because some people are introverted. But however, that could be a downfall too because introverted people do need to be pushed sometimes to get out of their comfort zone and to be with people, right? Um, in-person courses given you a lot of, uh, they give you a lot of opportunity to kind of interact socially, right? So that's kind of nice. Online courses simply don't have the same level of interaction. It could be a downfall. Sometimes online learning can be harder for people to learn, especially Arial. I would think Arial especially could be harder to learn online and it really concerns me honestly with the online learning for for Ariel and I do believe this is why also why we see a lot of injuries now and why we see a lot of um, equipment failures and um, we should never be complacent with bloopers or um, funny falls or anything like that it's not funny to fall and we should never make that a normal 
think that's why it's also really important to learn progressions, especially. It's really important to, to make yourself learn in progressions when you're learning at home. But online learning can be harder to learn from at home. It can just be harder. Another con of online courses is that it's just much harder to learn from your peers and other um, people online. Within course programs, it's much easier to share your experience with someone and you know to even share your frustrations and ask a question or you know kind of work through a problem together. It's harder to do that online. Online courses and programs um, and classes take way more self-discipline and self-motivation. It's kind of like I was talking about earlier, how some people just kind of turn off the, their camera and they'll walk away, they'll start playing with the dog or the cat, or they'll go get a drink. You gotta learn self-responsibility. You gotta, you got to grab it and take it and know what you're going for. And you have to say, do, do I want this more or do I want this more? Despite all of the issues and problems that online uh, learning can can have. I really do believe that virtual and online uh, workouts is the next generation of fitness revolution. It's, it's literally the next fitness revolution. And I, guys, I want to know if you agree with me. Let me know by giving me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't agree. Okay, so give me a thumbs up if you agree. Give me a thumbs down if you disagree about virtual and online workouts being the next generation fitness revolution. Let me know. Even with Ariel, we must learn to adapt so that we keep the integrity of our business, of this industry, and of our values as we adapt with the changes in how we learn Ariel. So it is the convenience-based fitness wellness service for the users to access a trainer or instructor online virtually instead of visiting the fitness facility. Even Mark Zuckerberg came out and talked about the metaverse and how this is our future. Um, of course, he's kind of jumping the gun because it's not made yet, but could this be our future, guys? Like, what does this even mean for Ariel, for aerialists? What does this mean for us? Um, it literally means that as a coach, I could holographically impose myself in your living room and teach you a class or vice versa. You could like holographically come into my studio and I could teach you, I could be there teaching you a class and see all of your technique and everything. Um, it kind of sounds really cool. And as a kid, I even used to watch um, Jim and the Holograms. Like it was my one of my favorite cartoons. I still watch it to, not to this day, but up until a couple of years ago, I would sometimes watch an episode, okay? Because it's super nostalgic and I freaking loved it. But it's crazy because at the time, we thought holograph, holograms were, you know, the, we, we, we thought it was the future. And um, it's crazy how we're literally in the future, right? I mean, is this for real? Holograms, holographic, metaverse, like going virtual, like, it's just kind of a, um, it's a whole new ball game, isn't it? So, Fly Tribe, I want to know, would you take a class in the metaverse? Like, let me know in the comments <laughs> what you think about the metaverse. I'm so curious to know what you think about this and, and where, what, where you think it could lead us. What do you think it's going to do to learning? Ariel, what do you think it's going to do? Do you think it's going to help us? Do you think it's going to hinder us? My most, my biggest concern is like the connection to human beings. I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's just kind of, it's just weird. But they say, you know, stay with the times. And I'm definitely for staying with the times. But how far do we have to go out of reality to stay relevant? Literally, Metaverse's primary goal is to interact virtually, overcome the limitations of devices, such as like your smartphone, your tablets, and to immerse themselves in like um, this new world, as they say, um, and um, where the line between what is physical and what is digital are increasingly blurred, like literally.
That's what they said. That's weird. But anyway. Um, so will the metaverse take the place of an already surged industry? Will Zoom, Skype, online classes be replaced like the online surge dang near took out like the in-person experience? Like, I want to know, guys, do you think that's going to happen? The online surge boasts a whopping 53% growth. And I'm telling you, it did nearly take my studio out. And it's still trying to. It's still trying to take my studio out. It's making me more go more online. Like, it's not that I want to. Like, I'm having to. If I want to... If we, if we want to continue to, to make any kind of beans and tortillas on the table. <laughs> because honestly, this is all I know how to do, you know, as I'm sure, I'm sure you went to school uh, to do a profession and you rely on that to put beans and tortillas on your table or whatever that is. But literally, if we break the term metaverse down, we get meta, which means beyond, and verse, which stands for universe. So beyond universe. And they even said how they want to blur the lines between reality and digital. And that that's disturbing to me. Because for me personally, I even though I like learning online, like I'm pretty obsessed with it. I love it, just like everybody, right? It it brings out, uh, it triggers endorphins. I do like reality. I do actually like, even though I'm a I'm an introvert, I actually do like to be around people as well. It's weird. I don't know. Um, but Zuckerberg literally stated, um, believe the metaverse will be the successor to the mobile internet. Guys, that's, that's cr crazy. We'll be able to feel present, like we're right there with people, no matter how far apart we actually are. Do you believe in that? Do you believe that the metaverse would actually help us come more together? Let me know in the comments below if you think that the metaverse, um, if you think it's going to bring us more together. Like, I'm really curious how other people think about that. So, but keeping it real in front of the camera, like we see so often how it, it, just so much fakery, right? Boy, oh boy, do you feel like you are like information overload? Not with the metaverse stuff even, but just with the world in a whole. I mean, there's like so much information coming at us all in all directions. And for some of us, it can be really overwhelming. I think for these new generations, uh, I think it's a, an everyday norm for them. Of course, they, they grew up with all of this technology and all this information coming at them. It can even be a trigger in like a shutdown mode for some people though. This information overload, it can shut people down. But how do we decipher through all the free content on the interweb? Like, is it all true? How can we trust the source? And I see all the time now, we've gotten away from really looking away, looking at people's credentials. And, and the, the mentality nowadays is literally the support of someone, if they look popular on social media, if they have a lot of followers, then you'll support them or they'll, you'll, you know, you'll, listen to what they have to say. We've gotten away from looking into people's credentials. You know, I always aim to be in this world as someone who wants to lead by making a difference, not an impression. So the followers, the likes, I mean, the only reason why I ask for that is because this algorithm thing that we have to try and get past so that we can get our information out to people who need it like you. But other than that, I am personally not here to make a impression. I'm here to make a difference. And you need to ask yourself that as well. Are you here to make an impression or a difference? And understanding that not all content should be free. 
I had a student's parent literally tell me during the pandemic, right when the pandemic hit, right when we had to close the studio, that, um, and she had been with me for about three years. Okay, she started Ariel with me. She was actually performing with me at this point. Um, I had gotten her to a, um, a performing level. And just all of a sudden, her mother contacted me and said to, to you know, stop the membership, that they were getting free content from this place in Florida, and that they were not gonna need my classes, my online Zoom classes. That's what I was trying to do to keep my people from leaving the studio from their memberships, you know, because I didn't want the studio to fall. And so I was offering online classes in replace of the classes in the studio. And it's just me. I didn't have a lot of money or resources or capital or even a team, a big team or anything to help me push out all this free information that apparently this place in Florida was doing. So I also had at one time a roommate tell me, why would I pay for a personal trainer when I can just go to YouTube? You know, and this, I'm a personal trainer as well. And this is why he was telling me this. This mentality literally floored me. But I do think it's a mentality where we've gotten to. I just always thought that the knowledge and experience outweighed the follower count. Um, staying safe while training from online programs and tutorials is literally, I think, a tricky thing, especially since it's the norm to practice at home and apparently it's become okay to practice alone. The aerial industry has gotten super lackadaisical, guys, and, and this is part of that uncomfortable topic where we need to realize that being lackadaisical, that's what's causing these injuries. That's what's causing these equipment failures. That's what's causing these haha -ha, funny bloopers, which I never think that we should normalize a fall, a fail, or anything like that. We should never uh, put it on a pedestal or glorify it. So with this epic growth we have seen in the online world, in the fitness world, how can we keep Ariel safe? And I would love to know some, some ideas from you guys um, down below in the comments. Let me know in the comments, but I'm going to go through a few here of my ideas and um, let me know what you guys think. So understand that free content is a great place to start, but that you'll um, want to seek out professional advice if you want greater results. This is simply because the free content online is designed for just that, guys. It's to get you started and then for you to move on to the next bigger and greater thing. So you'll end up plateauing eventually if you continue only with the free stuff. Looking at who you're getting your advice from. With the overload of information online, um, I'm noticing that Joe Schmoes are making videos and slapping them on, okay? So I encourage you to, to know who you are getting your information from. Are they just someone who has just as much experience as you do? Okay, because I'm telling you, behind the camera, it's, it's a lot different behind the camera. Okay, I promise you that. So why would you take an advice about how to become a professional aerialist from someone who has never been a professional aerialist? Okay, so I hope y'all kind of get it on that. So understand that even with times changing and more and more virtual classes and at-home programs kind of popping up here and there, always train with someone present. I know this is probably freaking annoying to you, okay? And it, it would be for me too. I'd be like, yeah, right, okay? Um, but, but no, I, I actually wouldn't be like that because I was never that way. I always had someone I trained with. Um, even if they were, they were usually just training, doing something else, and I was doing my thing, right? But you should never get in the habit of training alone. Always have somebody there with you, even if someone is in the corner reading a book or watching a movie or whatever it is, guys. Take that self-responsibility 
This is how you up level your professionalism. Okay, even if you don't want to be a professional aerialist, don't you want to train like one? So those are just a few ways that we can stay on top of it as the time changes. So if these resonated with you, let me know. I'd love to know some more from you guys, what you guys are thinking. If there's anything that you would like me to touch on a topic, I'd love to know in the comments below. I'm here for you guys. I'm here to give you guys information. I want to give you guys good information. Pro tips from a, from a retired professional. Um, I want to do everything I can for you guys. So let me know. Don't forget guys to like and subscribe. Ring the bell because unfortunately this is the stuff that helps us um, get the information out to you guys. All right, so till next time, Fly Tribe, I cannot wait till the next time, but may you create the life that you have always wanted. All right, Fly Tribe, if you enjoyed this episode and if you think that one of your aerial buddies would enjoy it, make sure you share it with them. And if you tag Flying Fitness on Instagram or anywhere, social media, which our Instagram is at flying.fitnesstx, um, I will personally send you some fun aerial swag that also helps us kind of um, beat that algorithm, guys. So until then, we'll see you soon.